Uh, so here it is, folks. It's called The Manufacturing of Mass Psychosis. Can Sanity Return to an Insane World? The masses have never thirsted after truth. They turn aside from evidence that is not to their taste, preferring to deify error if error seduce them. Whoever can supply them with illusions is easily their master. Whoever attempts to destroy their illusions is always their victim. Diseases of the body can spread through a population and reach epidemic proportions, but so too can diseases of the mind. And of these epidemics of the latter variety, the mass psychosis is the most dangerous. During a mass psychosis, madness becomes the norm in a society, and delusionary beliefs spread like a contagion. But as delusions can take many forms, and as madness can manifest in countless ways, the specific manner in which a mass psychosis unfolds will differ based on the historical and cultural context of the infected society. In the past, Mass psychoses have led to witch hunts, genocides, and even dancing manias. But in the modern era, it is the mass psychosis of totalitarianism that is the greatest threat. Totalitarianism, writes Arthur Verse Lewis, is the modern phenomenon of total centralized state power, coupled with the obliteration of individual human rights. In the totalized state, there are those in power and there are the objectified masses, the victims. In a totalitarian society, the population is divided into two groups, the rulers and the ruled, and both groups undergo a pathological transformation. The rulers are elevated to an almost godlike status, which is diametrically opposed to our nature as imperfect beings who are easily corrupted by power. The masses, on the other hand, are transformed into the dependent subjects of these pathological rulers and take on a psychologically regressed and childlike status. Hannah Arendt, one of the 20th century's preeminent scholars of this form of rule, called totalitarianism an attempted transformation of human nature itself. But this attempted transformation only turns sound minds into sick minds. For as the Dutch medical doctor who studied the mental effects of living under totalitarianism wrote, There is in fact much that is comparable between the strange reactions of the citizens of totalitarianism and their culture as a whole, on the one hand, and the reactions of the sick schizophrenic on the other. The social transformation that unfolds under totalitarianism is built upon and sustained by delusions. For only deluded men and women regress to the childlike status of obedient and submissive subjects and hand over complete control of their lives to politicians and bureaucrats. Only a deluded ruling class will believe that they possess the knowledge, wisdom, and acumen to completely control society in a top-down manner. And only when under the spell of delusions would anyone believe that a society composed of power-hungry rulers, on the one hand, and a psychologically regressed population, on the other, will lead to anything other than mass suffering and social ruin. But what triggers the psychosis of totalitarianism? As was explored in the previous video of this series, the mass psychosis of totalitarianism begins in a society's ruling class. The individuals that make up this class, be it politicians, bureaucrats, or crony capitalists, are very prone to delusions that augment their power, and no delusion is more attractive to the power-hungry than the delusion that they can and should control and dominate a society. When a ruling elite becomes possessed by a political ideology of this sort, be it communism, fascism, or technocracy, the next step is to induce a population into accepting their rule by infecting them with the mass psychosis of totalitarianism. This psychosis has been induced many times throughout history, and as Mirulu explains, it is simply a question of reorganizing and manipulating collective feelings in the proper way. The general method by which the members of a ruling elite can accomplish this end is called menticide, with the etymology of this word being a killing of the mind, and as Mirulu further explains, menticide is an old crime against the human mind and spirit, but systematized anew. 
It is an organized system of psychological intervention and judicial perversion through which a ruling class can imprint their own opportunistic thoughts upon the minds of those they plan to use and destroy. Priming a population for the crime of menticide begins with the sowing of fear. For as was explored in the first video of this series, when an individual is flooded with negative emotions such as fear or anxiety, he or she is very susceptible to a descent into the delusions of madness. Threats real, imagined, or fabricated can be used to sow fear, but a particularly effective technique is to use waves of terror. Under this technique, the sowing of fear is staggered with periods of calm, but each of these periods of calm is followed by the manufacturing of an even more intense spell of fear, and on and on the process goes. Or as Mirlu writes, each wave of terrorizing creates its effects more easily after a breathing spell than the one that preceded it because people are still disturbed by their previous experience. Morality becomes lower and lower and the psychological effects of each new propaganda campaign become stronger. It reaches a public already softened up. While fear primes a population for menticide, the use of propaganda to spread misinformation and to promote confusion with respect to the source of the threats and the nature of the crisis helps to break down the minds of the masses. Government officials and their lackeys in the media can use contradictory reports nonsensical information, and even blatant lies, as the more they confuse, the less capable will a population be to cope with the crisis and diminish their fear in a rational and adaptive manner. Confusion, in other words, heightens the susceptibility of a descent into the delusions of totalitarianism. Or as Mirlu explains, logic can be met with logic, while illogic cannot. It confuses those who think straight, the big lie and monotonously repeated nonsense have more emotional appeal than logic and reason. While the people are still searching for a reasonable counterargument to the first lie, the totalitarians can assault them with another. Never before in history have such effective means existed to manipulate a society into the psychosis of totalitarianism. Smartphones and social media, television and the internet, all in conjunction with algorithms that quickly censor the flow of unwanted information, allow those in power to easily assault the minds of the masses. What is more, the addictive nature of these technologies means that many people voluntarily subject themselves to the ruling elite's propaganda with a remarkable frequency. Modern technology, explains Mirlu, teaches man to take for granted the world he is looking at. He takes no time to retreat and reflect. Technology lures him on, dropping him into its wheels and movements. No rest, no meditation, no reflection, no conversation. The senses are continually overloaded with stimuli. Man doesn't learn to question his world anymore. The screen offers him answers, ready-made. But there is a further step the would-be totalitarian rulers can take to increase the chance of a totalitarian psychosis, and this is to isolate the victims and to disrupt normal social interactions. When alone and lacking normal interactions with friends, family, and co-workers, an individual becomes far more susceptible to delusions for several reasons. Firstly, they lose contact with the corrective force of the positive example. For not everyone is tricked by the machinations of the ruling elite, and the individuals who see through the propaganda can help free others from the menticidal assault. If, however, isolation is enforced, the power of these positive examples greatly diminishes. But another reason that isolation increases the efficacy of menticide is because like many other species, human beings are more easily conditioned into new patterns of thought and behavior when isolated. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that amazing? Just talking about totalitarianism itself, and it sounds like a dissertation on 